Alrighty guys, welcome back. We are here at round two. We are streaming a pretty fun game. It's going to be uh, Peter Katani versus, I'm not sure of his name yet, but I'm, we'll get it in just a second here as the stream guy up updates everything. Joshua, sick, we're playing with Joshua. We managed to get Peter Katani on stream here for round two. He's playing Hatchiak, that's pretty interesting. Let's see here. And they're already going into the mulligan and everything like that. Let's see. There we go, and we're back. All right, so it's just me, um, this one. So uh, I'm going to be interacting with chat a little bit. I've got my laptop here. And it's there's a little bit of a delay, but uh, that should be fine. I think we'll... Still be managing just fine. This is great. I must have missed a lot since topping Pokemon TCG. Oh, well, it's just some somebody commenting about top cuts in general. Yes, man, we're doing uh, doing big things. Moving on to Dragon Ball and everything. Got these nice banners and everything. Alrighty. So what's his opponent playing? I'm gonna zoom in on that. I can't tell. I think it's the new. It might be the new stuff. Let me see here. Peter rocking the uh, Rio sleeves. Yeah, he's rocking the Street Fighter sleeves. Pretty dope. Of course, right now so that's Peter. Let me get the other view. I'm all right. Not muted. Not muted at the moment. Still no. Not muted, man. You're not muted. You're Eggman. Still muted. Or am I having audio issues? Hello, Eggman. George, can you please remove the overlay? Uh, the overlay. There's overlay. No. Oh, okay. Weird. All right. What's he playing? I still can't tell what his leader is. I think it's just a new. Yeah. Clash key. Who's leader? Clash key? I can't tell. Uh, well. Hatch versus search queue. Yeah, that is the clue. The clash key. I know I said clash queue. Search queue. It's gonna be interesting. We're gonna see how these new uh these new decks fare against um against well, you know, the old terror that is Hatchiak. We'll see. Peter's got his unicorn shirt on. Repping. Very well trimmed today. Let's see here. One drop, that's pretty good. So this is aggro. Let's see if Peter has a way to say no to this. And he doesn't. Is he gonna ditch two cards or take two life? Typically with Hatchek, you don't wanna take any life. Like the the variants I played in the past, you just stay at eight if you can. And that seems to be Peter Katani's uh, his narrative here as well as he's getting ready to super combo a couple, or sorry, just combo things away. Or, yep. I think he realizes how aggro the deck can be. And so, uh, What's up, boys? How are you guys doing today? I'll hit you up with the what's up too. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some fun Twitch chat interaction. Remove the overlay and make the game full screen. Oh, I got here. Crazy. All right. So Peter is one turn away from awakening, and that's when he can start his uh, his slow pressure, I guess. And he's swinging at the. Um, the one drop because he wants to clear it off the board. He doesn't want to have to deal with that, which is fair because double strike is pretty big. He doesn't want a neck two from his hand again. And swings into a Whiskorsh. Yeah, so I think early aggression is very important in this matchup for sure. Just to be able to hit with that double strike is probably pretty big. But Peter's probably going to play a threat here and try to clear the board once again. Oh, no, just a blocker. So it's all good. He mills two super combos off that. That's rough. Ugh. Yikes. That's kind of harsh. It's probably not a happy camper. <laughs> but he's got a blocker, so now if he does swing with that 5k, he can just block it and then probably won't use the auto ability, so won't be. Oh my goodness. Uh, there we go. He swings, draws. So it looks like he's playing probably the standard build that everyone thought of once this leader was announced and the, there were the leaks and stuff like that. He's got just the five drop Goku and Pan for when he awakens. Discards the ape. Yep, that's good. He's probably got the, that ape to evolve over the one drop there so that he could uh, 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 offer him out and just uh, pop off that way. He's going to swing once again into the leader. Double strike. He took the damage, which is very, very interesting here. He's going to swing again. Is he going to swing into a blocker is the question. Or just Peter Spear scared of something. And he blocks. Yep. Uh, the the good thing about this is that the 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 order goes uh, attack and then uh, negates autos then blocks. So 
he gets to uh, he gets to see if he used the auto before he blocks, which is pretty big. It's very very helpful. Otherwise, I think it'd be kind of unfair to be fair. It's really nice to even have to be triple weiss and energy. Yep. Some people are just good at the game, man. Triple weiss and energy happens. That's just how it be. I've been told Hatch isn't great anymore. I think Hatch is still very, very playable, very, very strong. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Oh, what happened here? Oh, all right. We're trying to make it bigger, I suppose. Is that what's happening? Let's see if we can try to fix some stuff here. All right, so Peter's awakened now. He's going to start drawing a lot of cards. Three, if I'm not mistaken. So now his hand is going to start being pretty stacked. I'm there's the Kitku. And he's also going to start adding balls now as well. This is uh, starting to snowball out of hand. If there's no other spice besides the uh, the five drop pan play on awakening turn, then I'm then it's probably going to be pretty hard for uh, the Kalashku player to win because uh, it's only a matter of time until Peter loads his hand up with like 12 negates, the the power bursts and the uh, the one drop Goku's. There's the Dende, just in case he plays objection, I guess. <laughs> Oh, another weird transaction. Oh, so there it is. At least this guy knows. What is all this? Next. Alrighty. Let's see here. Let's see what's happening. So this isn't going to be anything flashy on Peter's side. I think it's just going to try to squeeze out. Um, I'm assuming the Clash Coup, uh, the Clash Coup, I keep saying Clash Coup, the Surge Coup uh, player is just going to slowly whittle down in health. Um, the fact that the Hatchyak player, uh, the Hatchyak leader gets 5,000 every single attack, like after every single attack is pretty insane. Like 20k to the face is, it becomes overwhelming after a certain point in time. And then it's only a matter of time until Peter spams out his dual attack guys. And if he gets the Demigra on board, I don't think he has an answer for it. Besides Champa, if he plays it. I don't know if he main decks the Champa. But it's definitely going to be a, uh, a prevalent card in the side deck game, I believe. There is a look at his hand. He has quite a few of the five drop Gokus, super combos. Uh, big shout out to this guy. He has his deck all foiled out except for that Chompa. I see that that Chompa's not foiled. We have Judge, uh, Judge uh, Chompa's on sale, man. Come on, what are you doing? Big oof. Well, you know what they say, guys. Higher rarity, higher the rarity your deck, the the more chance you win. That's just been proven facts. If you need a card and it's uh, you have a foil, you'll see it. Trust me. So we're seven to seven right now in life, or no, actually the the um, cla no, cla I keep saying clash coup. The search coup player has six life, if I'm not mistaken, and he just went down to four, five life. He's now he's at four, four life for him, to Peter's seven life. Big off. All right, now Peter's going on his turn four. He's going to start being able to do some crazy stuff slowly but surely. He's going to play a Turles. Give that dual attack potentially 5k. He's got the cards in hand to do it as well. And he's going to start the process of stacking the bottom of his deck. He's going to know what's at the bottom. And eventually be able to cycle through back to them. And uh, it's going to be a bad time. It's going to be a bad time if nothing, uh, if nothing changes here. I'm not The matchup into into this isn't the best. The best chance he can possibly have is to be able to pull off the uh, the two life awaken where he plays the pen and the um, and the, the Goku where he's com which he's comboing away right now. Or he's arriving right now, sorry. Is that the Beerus? And there's the Beerus. And now he's going to choose to pop something, probably popping the Turles, just because, yep, you don't want to get them that second attack. And Peter did discard a card, I believe, to give a dual attack. Oh, no, he's killing the Goku. Interesting. I wonder why. I w why did he kill the Goku? Why not the, or the, the, the Gohan? Why not the, uh, the Chunks? Or the, the Turles? It's interesting. Very different. Well, this game is over. Wow. Well, yeah. Uh, F. Miller, you saying this, this game is over, but uh, yeah, that's kind of how I see it as well. I don't know. I don't know. The, the, there has to be some sort of spice. Like that's the beauty of Dragon Ball, right? Anything can happen at any point in time. Like some something can just like luck sack a draw and then just hit you hard. But I think this is taking a lot. This isn't going to be like too long of a game. I don't, know, I don't think it's going to leak into time just because um, the uh, the aggressiveness of his deck is going to probably hurt him in the end of it all because he's going to keep taking life trying to get to where he needs to get and then over time the second hatchyak starts playing like dual attackers that are big it's going to be it's going to be really really hard for him to uh so he main decks the champa we see it's gonna be really hard for him to to come back but he main decks the champa and he main decks the cooler um to be able to uh, counter counter 
and the chop is really good in case uh, Peter falls for it, and next turn maybe he might uh, play the Migra, and then that might be where um, Joshua can come and steal a win with uh, the Chompa and then just kill him the next turn or something with uh, the Awaken. So maybe if he lets himself get down to two, and then Chompa's the, the Migra or something, it's it's going to have to, the sequencing is going to have to fall in his favor. That's just the only thing that he can worry about here. There we go. He draws another super combo off that and a one drop. The Beerus is now a live target for the offering, which is really good. But uh, but yeah, I don't think the Migra is the play next turn anyway, so the, the chances that Peter does it is probably not too, too, too high. Let's see what happens here. And he's going for it. Offering. He's not going to attack with it or anything. He's just straight up going for it. I wonder why he didn't attack with the Beerus. Just to get... S oh, yeah. Never mind. I'm, yeah, yeah, because he couldn't attack with the Goku if he did that then. What's the move here? What's happening? There seems to be a judge interaction going on right now that's uh, causing a little bit of a delay here. Let's see. So he declared... Did he flip too early? Did he flip before declaring that he was gonna... that he was going to do that? Okay, no, that's fine. He hasn't flipped yet. What's happening right now? Let's see. Or is he just saying you have to keep those cards under him before you do that? Draw three. Oh, those cards stay under him is what he's saying. And then he's going to arrive, or is offering this guy. Now it flips over. There you go. That's the proper sequencing of it all. And then offering there, he's going to choose to crit the life. And not let him draw two, with good reason. When you're at seven health, you can afford to, to drop a couple health. And now what's he, now he's comboing off the leader attack because he's still in that phase there. He awakened in combo phase. And he gives double strike to his leader. Oh, no. And then he... Oh, wow. And he discarded a card off of the leader, too, as well. He's that ability. So now this this attack's hitting for pretty hard. I don't know if Peter can out-combo it. He does have a Bible in his hand, so it probably isn't too hard. But those are the two. He milled two super combos earlier, but now he, got, he managed to get those two other ones there. He is halfway through his deck, though, so that's... Uh, Fair, and then two more Dragon Balls that he keeps reappearing with the Kitkus. Three Dragon Balls. That's interesting. Most uh, Hatchak players I know only play two, but seeing three is probably the right number, especially in this situation. Probably spent his whole. I remember he uh, he spent like a couple turns earlier just recurring them, recurring them, and now this is why it pays off. And this is probably going to swing into a negate or a block, and he chooses to block because why not? It's free on board, no combos, and that's probably the end of the turn. Um, I assume that he probably has a topo in hand, and that's why he passed with three mana up. Um, yeah, the other player. Joshua probably has a topo in hand, so now the pluses continue. Peter gets to add a Dragon Ball back, and his Turles gets to swing. Will he discard a card? And he discards the ball that he's going to get back later. See, this is a, such a good engine. Yeah, he didn't want to take that uh, that crit damage. <laughs> it's uh, probably the right player. <laughs> and he, it's like not, he, not like he negged that much. He lost three cards in his hand, but they were just Dragon Balls that he's going to get back with the Kid Ku eventually. Oh, that's interesting. He chose to after image the Turles instead of after imaging the Kid Ku and popping it. And that's because he thought it was going to kill the Turles. Okay, so now he's changing his target. Chose the Kid Ku. And killed it. Peter's a very good sport, obviously. He's going to let him do do that. He's a good guy. Nothing nothing new. No new information there. Now he swings at the leader. Is he swinging at his leader? Probably, because he's at three life now. And this is just what Hachiak does, man. It just slowly whittles you down. Very, very slowly whittles you down. Makes it very hard to play. Very hard to uh, go. It's impossible to go wide, obviously. But um, the baby is a counter to it. The five-drop baby will negate his skill. If you uh, take a life during battle, and you'll be able to attack with uh, with your other battle cards, but it's very hard to it's very hard to pull off if you're not playing a very uh, baby centered deck. That's why Beerus has a not uh, has not the worst matchup against against Hatch. Um, he can he can go pretty wide after negating the board, uh, the leader ability, and then going hard with his board. <coughs> and there you go, there it is. Joshua's one man uh, one energy short of being. Uh, well, there's another Kid Koo. Joshua was one energy short of being uh, 
at five so that he would not be in range to get hit by the slug but now the slug uh, cleared his board and it's going to be very very difficult for him to come back granted the leader does keep gaining critical but he can only do that i think two more times because he has to take a card out every under, from under his leader every single time he does it and it gets quite messy but now he's got two kitkus on board he's going to be recurring all the cards that he lost last turn on that double strike crit he's got back already in his hand this is quite the disaster here He's played three Kid Kus on this turn. Or he used three Kid Kus effect this turn. Yeah, definitely not worth playing a uh, the 20k Trunks for as a target. You can just play so much better stuff. And this is just what Hatch does. It's nothing new to anybody. We're all, we're all used to watching this, I think. But you play to win, baby. That's Eggman, you're right, man. You just play to win. That's what it is. That's just what it is. Damn. All right. Let's see if I can try to get... Is that 4th Whis? He didn't get Exodia, boys. He doesn't have the 4th Whis in mana. He only had the, the 3. If you uh, if you didn't know, if you get all 4 of those Whises in mana, you instantly win the game. Just by the way. I'm just kidding. That's not true. <laughs> not charging the add energy really hurt him. You're right. He forgot. To, well, he didn't forget, but he just didn't charge. But, yep. If he would have charged, then the, the Slug wouldn't have had him... Uh, been able to if he would have charged the slug wouldn't have hit him i don't know maybe he was just hurting for cards but i think i think the new uh, the new search cards don't typically have a rough time uh accumulating advantage and stuff it's typically pretty easy for them to get it uh, an exploding weakness would have been nice yep an exploding weakness would have been very nice you're not wrong and he plays the mira oh that's pretty big so mira's a really good card. It's going to let him untap a mana uh, energy at the end of his turn. He gets to draw a card, 30k attack. It's endless value, but unfortunately it falls onto death ears as he swings into a negate. Does he want to cooler this though? He has three mana. He does not. He passes turn. That's unfortunate. He could have played the cooler and pushed for damage. I think that would have been not the worst play. He would have finished with uh, two energy up and it wouldn't have been the end of the world so if he, he still could have topo and everything i don't know i think it would have been the right correct play Let's see here doing the things kid Ku do do best adding some dragon balls and this is why i think it would have been very viable for him to go wait go in with that uh that cooler the game seems a little far gone now i'm not gonna lie but uh but I think pushing for that extra two damage double strike would have been would have been pretty good, especially if it were like a 30k. Either that, or you would have emptied out his hand. But I think the the play to do now is to probably uh, wait. What's he doing here? Okay, so he's gonna arrival something, another Beerus probably. He's gonna kill the Turles. That's perfect. There we go. So now that's threat off the board. But Peter's at the point in the game where now he's gonna start playing threats because the Turles is a threat, but he's not. A huge threat. There's the overrealm, or yep, and he's swinging. Interested as to why he overrealmed before swinging. And he shipped it for 20k. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. The 20k just starts adding up so fast, like 20k, 20k, 20k. With every passing turn, that's an extra 5k, which is basically it ba which basically adds up to another card, to a whole other card. And he chooses to take it because again, 20 and 15 are two very different levels. He's tapping two. For a blocker, not that's pretty good. Two mill two, mill the negate, unfortunately, but I don't think he's upset about it. And I think Peter, Peter's just in a position where he can pass. Yeah, absolutely. He's just chilling, man. <laughs> unexpected turn. Yep. Yeah, if he had the unexpected turn or something to nuke the board, I mean, even a Kami would be insane right now. But like, I don't even think if he Kami'd he'd be able to win this. Like, he'd lose his, he wouldn't lose his Beerus, actually. His Beerus is a 5-drop. Right, just keep swinging, man. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. That's what you gotta do in this matchup. Although, he's, uh, I think, I think Joshua made a pretty big mistake in not negating with the, uh, uh is that all you got in his hand? He could have killed both Kid Kus, and I think that would have just, uh, made the game a lot easier for him. Unless he has a way to clear the board right now, which I don't think he does. Um, I think the play was to, is that all you got? His leader attack. Then you avoid taking that damage, and you nuke both Kid Kus on board. Um, but now Peter's just going to be able to swing, drop the Dragon Balls, recur them. Swing, drop the Dragon Balls, recur them. It's going to be it's gonna be just non-stop. It's unfortunate, but uh, 
Oh, that's why I said yeah, Eggman, you're right. Hey, let's go, baby. Uh, the, the, the stream delay is uh, throwing me off a little bit here, but it's necessary as we're streaming it to the people in there playing in the regional as well. So they get to see it on the outside over there. But uh, we have a delay so that uh, people don't shout stuff. <laughs> so it's actually hard tapping the pan on three. And is he going to play? Oh, no, he just passes. Okay. That's interesting. He could have... No, he couldn't have untapped the beer since swung again. That's unfortunate. Maybe he could have, but I don't know why he didn't. Oh, yeah, that's strange. Yep, so I think now, I think Peter... Yeah, I think with, with what Peter wants to do is he just doesn't want to... He doesn't want to drop, put all his eggs in one basket. There's a Chompa. So he wasted a Chompa on that instead of the Demigra. So now if, if he doesn't have another Chompa in hand and Peter has a Demigra, the game is just over. Um, but uh, the best thing to do is to probably just play some threats. I don't think he chompa the right target here. I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to just... There we go. Resolve the autos in a little bit weird chain here, but he just does that. Pops the pan. Beauty of it. And he swings with his 20k leader. Into a foo, no combos. He still didn't is that all you got. It is stressful right here. <laughs> he probably has the Goku attack, so if he's good, he'll he'll do it here. Maybe he maybe he has information that we don't have here, but uh, it's probably the play. And he's got here. Let's go. Oh, it's not even a judge foil. Come on, bro. Not even right. Oh, he chose to kill not both Kikus. That's like viable, I guess. You can you can get away with that. You don't have to. But Peter adds the Dragon Ball back. I'm not sure if he got to reoccur the Dragon Ball with his other negate. But he's got one mana open passing. Drop the turn. Easy. Alrighty. What sleeves are those that Joshua have? There's some pretty s sick looking sleeves, man. Wow. Alright, he's gonna. This, this turn's probably gonna be the make or break turn here. If he doesn't uh, do something significant, then Peter just gets to go next turn and basically dump everything and kill him. Um, he's playing a Weiss to negate a card's ability, which is actually big brain as a heck. Yo, holy, Peter's gonna have to read that card. But basically, it's a cold bloodlust on summon. And just targets anything that's already on board, which is pretty insane. That's actually big brain. You know the uh, the dual color cards like that. They're actually not bad. The Beerus draws one. The um, Android Seventeen uh, gets to stop a combo piece. It's actually not bad. Like it's very strong if you play it and you just swing with it. And your opponent your opponent can just fi combo a five k. They have to combo two five k's to get over it um, because the first one goes to drop area. So it's pretty insane. Uh, I've actually stolen a few games with that card if you just spam the board with them. Although you can only use it once a game per card. So this is his leader. Into a negate, of course. Because Peter, knowing that that's his last attack for the turn, doesn't care. Just says, sure, here it is. I think the only way um, Joshua wins here, and but uh, it might be too far gone, gone now, is that if he has a Banisher uh, Foo, the A-drop, Dark Banisher Foo, if he manages to get that triple attacker on board, making Peter warp all these cards from his hand, it's going to just be GG. For sure. Um, hopefully, as another Chompa for whatever threat Peter plays this turn. But even at that, oh, that's game. Ooh. He's gonna have to read that card for sure. He's asking to read it. There's no way he's not. Oh no! What a disaster! You got the SPR two. Let's go. Rarity wins games. What was I saying earlier, guys? You have the highest rarity. You're getting the dubs, 100%. Does that hit that? Does that hit that? Huh? Does the timing on that work out? I think the timing on that works out. Mm. Yeah, because that hits it before. So we're probably good. Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's see here. Um, I'm just going to double check to make sure that Granted, I'm sure that it does hit it, but just making sure. Just making sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's fine. Super Gatling gun. Ugh, yeah. Same as same as like Crusher Ball or whatever. Which is which is decent. Like it might save him, but probably not because he's Zeno evolved. Onto that Goku has double strike as well. <coughs> Peter dumped his did he dump his hand? No, yes, he hasn't dumped his hand. Hmm. But now the only thing Joshua can do is combo. Granted Joshua's hand is was was quite big. And there's the first attack going up to uh thirty? Forty K? Forty K. Thirty K. No, thirty five. Thirty five. So let's see if he can beat it. Or nope. That's game one. All right, Peter takes game one. Uh, four with four life left. The real question is, is he going to be able to win a game at, at uh, eight life? That's the real question. Damn. All right. So, yeah, I think I think that's what uh, what was expected of the matchup, to be honest. Anytime Hatchak has to play against wide aggro, it's kind of like free low. Um, if there's a way for him to somehow cheat the the five drop out with a pen early enough then he can maybe spam out but like i think even baby has not the easiest time beating this deck um bro just scoop and go to round two yeah yeah well i mean it's it's, it's passing by quite quick like the uh we still have 33 minutes so that didn't even take up half the time here we should we should be fine unless some there's an upset in game two um he can tank game himself for a turn yeah yeah i'll sleep we all know hatchyak's good hatchyak is always going to be like I said, as long as there's no there's no card that directly counters the leader, um, like they did like Kronoa to Shigesh or something like that, the the leader's always going to be like tier 1 to tier 2, just no matter what format we're in, just because he stops uh, he stops everything, man. You can't go white against him, and that's busted. So, and with the whole uh, being able to recycle your, uh, your, your power bursts and everything else, you, not your power bursts, but your power bursts into that one-drop Goku negate, it was just too much. It was just too much. Time in game here, give yourself time. Oh, yeah, you guys are wild in the comments. Everyone's just saying you should just scoop. Do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gatling gun, baby. That's a good, it's a good card for that matchup. Like, he doesn't need the Chompa if he plays the, the Gatling gun, I guess. Um, but even at that, man, like, it's just it puts you too far behind. I think, I think you have to load up your board with, with like. It, if he's not siding in the banisher foo the game, he's he's gonna lose game two just as easy as he lost game one. It's gonna be a quick two oh. But um yeah, that there's nothing else. That's that's the only thing he could possibly side in. Peter's trying to side out the Dendes, obviously. What is he siding in though? Let's see what those cards are. Yeah, he's unstacking the super combos. He doesn't want to mill two super combos in a row again. <laughs> but yep. Let's see here. He's got the cooler index still, minus ten K, I guess. That hits some cards in his deck. That could hit the the one drop Goku if he needs to. A lot of people are messaging me. Um, we'll see here. Well, as they side in. Logo, interesting. There's Peter, he's doing his thing still. He's up a game. I, I don't think like. I don't think the the side deck is the biggest thing for Peter right now. Like, he just has to play the long game, and honestly, he'll be fine. Like, if he just runs enough negates and like those blockers just reoccur themselves, he's just chilling. This matchup is actually a disaster for the the surge leaders, because like. Uh, so you can't bear it. Surge, surge feels very pressure oriented, and this dude don't got it. <laughs> Yikes! Um, I think I think it's more so just the hatch yak. Like going going wide is is like one of the hardest decks to play because you have to be very good, or like decks that go wide are the hardest decks to play just because you have to be very um, smart with your combos and your attack sequences. Um, so, but when you're playing against a deck that says you only get to attack once, by the way, it's kind of rough. The the life the life the life is hard. Oh, now they're going into game two. Mulligan doing their thing. Let's see. All right. 
right, let's get it. Yeah, they're both 1-0. They both won their first matches. Um, I think I'm not sure if Peter had a buy or if he if he got the. Uh, All right, guys. Uh, you've been. Let's see here. Okay, let's see. Game's going on. It's it's gonna be kind of a slow one. I think. I didn't think. Uh, we did not think that we just want to see the new surge leader in action. To be honest, um, honestly, I have a f I have a feeling that Beerus is just better uh, in this matchup, at least. Like in general, probably not, just because again the clash leaders can put on so much pressure, and if they go mid range to late game, they can actually apply a lot of pressure again with that crit and stuff, uh, especially the the surge coup. But I think in this matchup, it's just <laughs> it's just dead in the water, man. It's like it's just it's trying to play like universe six Kaba. Uh, spe like a uh, storm against against Hatchiak. It's kind of like the same. It gives me the same vibes here. You're just not gonna get anything done. Oh baby, I don't think uh. So Peter Peter sided in on an expected turn, which is anti tech to Joshua, uh, sideboard probably. But I don't that that's if if Joshua even side decked anything. So he denies the hope the Turles pretty big. So Peter says, all right, I'll play a Kid Koo instead. I'll settle for this, no problem. Granted, he's probably going to do it anyways. And adds the ball from deck. So this is this is where, like, it's rough because early, er, decks, decks who storm like this try to early aggro with 10k attacks and, and maybe some 15k attacks. And because he's able to reoccur those uh, those balls back and back over and over again, it just becomes so impossible for him to win to, ma to, to pressure and hatch can stay at, like, 8 life, 7 life. Uh, this event is 255 people, I believe. 150. All right, I'll get the answer. He just tried throwing up like the this the the how many we had here and uh, with his fingers, and I just got gang signed. We're 216 at this event. So this is the first regional of the set, and we are 216 players, which is a healthy number, I think. It's a good amount of people. Um, Chicago's. Gorgeous city to be here, uh, be in. This is my third time here now, and it's a beaut. It was a uh, kind of a heavy storm um, yesterday, and uh, the a lot of planes got canceled. A lot of people couldn't make it. We actually ha lost a couple of our judges because of that. And uh, I gotta give a big shout out to Top Cut Games because uh, Top Cut Events because they've literally just pulled it all together, um, and everything's running very very smoothly. They managed to replace the people who needed to be replaced. Everything's going the way it should be. So, again, big shout out to Top Cuts Events. They are killing it. And here we go. This is this is what I keep coming back to, man. 20k out leader. If Hatchiak was just a 15k leader, draw a card, it would be so much more manageable than there. There. We, wait, why is he killing both? Okay, okay. Sorry, I thought he played the after image. <laughs> I got so shook. He played the. Uh, like he played the is that all you got, which is the correct line of play. Obviously, he was supposed to do that last turn, but he did last game, but he didn't. So now Peter's gonna not get the uh, the constant the constant pluses. So now the kid cool is just a break even for one mana because he only had to he only got to add it once. Pretty good. So Peter's gonna have a significant less amount of cards in his hand unless he gets more of his. But if he starts power bursting, um, then he can slowly just start re-adding them to his hand. And then continuing from there. But if you that's not bad because if he power bursts and he adds the kid coup, then he's not power bursting to add back the the Goku negate, the Zeno Goku negate. But he side decked Kami for some reason. I don't know, he maybe he mained it, but he might have may have sided it in for some reason. Because Kami doesn't hit most of uh Josh's cards, Joshua's cards. It'll hit like uh all the small guys like Pan and stuff, but and I don't know, the one drop Goku's, but it doesn't touch the Beerus or the five drop uh Goku either. But maybe it was just the main deck card that he didn't take out. It's uh the leader card is the new Surge Goku and against uh Hachi Boy. Good old Hachi Boy. Good old Hachi Boy. <sighs> Want to see our boy Peter Katani play. Um 
probably try to avoid um, Hatchak players from there, from then, like after this, unless uh, there's an interesting matchup at top tables and we can maybe see, uh, showcase how to try to beat Hatchak with that specific deck. Like I said, the Beerus matchup for Hatchak is probably really, in is very interesting for me at least. I like watching it just because it's, uh, you get to see like the Beerus player has to be very, very crafty to be able to, uh, to beat the, uh, what's it called? The Hatchak player, and with the whole uh, the five drop Gogeta, that, uh, Gogeta, the whole five drop baby that they play that negs the leader 20k and uh, negates his abilities, it's pretty big. It lets you s like swarm him on that one turn, and if you have enough life, you can do it twice, so it's pretty big. Oh, hold on. Yeah, you're right. Uh-oh. Uh, we need a judge. Something happened. Um, yeah, so the, the Kid Kuz, uh, what's it called? That all you got, um, it's not the end of the world. As long as it's to stop the game, make sure he doesn't swing with that. Or maybe he already swung with that. Um, when you negate with, is that all you got? It killed two Kid Kuz. Then he brought out the... the he negated with that all you got. Is that all you got? Killed both Kid Kuz. Then the opponent played the SS3. Uh, but uh, the SS3 says it has to be taken out by a skill. The negating and getting killed is the game mechanic. What does it say? Does it say when it, the card is removed from the field, or does it say by your opponent's skill? We're figuring it out, boys. Good catch. By a skill? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a skill. Cool. Okay, cool. Just double checking. All right. Well, we caught it. Seems like everything was according. I definitely had. Uh, I definitely got confused by that as well. It's uh, val very valid. But uh, so yeah, uh, the uh, reduction c is considered as a skill. I guess that's how it's ruled. So the reduction is considered a skill. And the game mechanic is ultimately what's knocking it out, but it was uh, there was a skill used on it that led to that. So I think that was the uh, that was the justification. It should be all good. Typically, these with Peter, he probably knows what he's doing. So let's see it here. Good catch. It's better to be safe than sorry. a skill yep minus 15 is a skill but kill the ultimately dying is the main game mechanic yeah yeah it's understandable where the confusion came from for sure but you know like we said it's better to be safe than sorry and now he's at five life this is where it starts to get a little bit scary the five life range especially when you're playing a hatch jack because when you get to that four point you don't want to take any more life but you're digging for cards because uh Oh, there's two. Draw two, discard one. But you're digging for cards, so it gets a little bit scary. Uh, Hatchiak is still chilling at eight life. Maybe Peter heard me say that he should try to win with eight life. But uh, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> 20k. He does have a book in his hand, though, so that's always that's always viable. And there we go. The dream's dead, boys. Negging is a skill, but killed by hitting zero is a game mechanic. Well, the judge ruled it. Yeah, Peter is a judge, and the judge ruled it uh, the same way. So it's probably it probably got fixed up somewhere on the FAQ for uh, Dragon Ball. So that that's actually probably up there, and you guys could find uh, that ruling specifically. It was a good catch though, because if that weren't the case, and I'm sure a few like a month ago or two months ago, they was probably ruled the other way. Uh, it's very shifty like that. Now he's gonna swing with his Hachi boy. See if there's a response here. Is that another? Is that all you got? That'd be pretty good if he had another. Is that all you got? Nope. Unfortunately, he does not. Double super combo. Uh, it's always rough when you have to use your super combos on defense instead of offense. Oh, oh lord! He played the Shenron. Is he gonna untap four and draw two? What's the move? What could he possibly have for a counterplay? Like the only thing I could think of that would stop that is, or not stop it, but just like he could chomp it. He can't denial it. He can't do anything else to it. Uh, he just neg 15k. That's not bad. 
He can kill the Kami, then kill the blocker. I think that's the that's the, probably the correct place to kill the Kami, kill the blocker. But he chose not to, or kill both blockers actually. What did he neck fifteen? Just the Shenron? Oh no, he was just resolving autos. Okay, cool. So yeah, he's gonna kill both blockers, which is insane value. That's very very good. I think that might have been a card he sided in, which again is a very good way to deal with the blockers, uh, considering they're so low in power. Oh my god, this is gonna be such an explosive turn for Peter. If he had the Nile of Hope right now, it would be insane. He's tapped out. But he doesn't. Oh, yikes. And he doesn't even have two red open. That's why Peter played it. Okay. Draw one, untap two. Oh, he's doing wholesome things here. And Peter has a book in his hand once again. They can just comfortably say pass. And do the thing Hatchyak does best. Nothing. We'll look into uh, to changing the the screen format in a bit, guys. After this game, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do. We're limited, but uh, we're trying to make the uh, watch experience as enjoyable as possible. A lot of you guys have reached out. We we've heard. We will uh, do our best. But right now, we're gonna finish up this game. It seems like it's probably not gonna go mu like uh, much longer. It's 18 minutes left in the round, but. I don't think they're going to need 18 minutes to finish this one up. This is just watching Joshua struggle and try to win this here. He's going to play as Beerus. I think he's given... I don't know if he gave the search crit to uh, his leader yet. But, alas. <laughs> Peter's got his huge D10 or D20. I'm not sure. I'm going to put it on his leader. And... Nope, nothing there. He's gonna. Oh, there you go. He's gonna awaken. He's gonna put three, a few under. Awaken, tap, draw, and the beer should die if I'm not mistaken. Unless he sacrificed something else, I didn't see it. Yeah. There we go. Beer is dead. I'm confused as to why he's. Oh, I keep I keep saying that, but I uh, keep catching myself every time. The Beerus, if he attacks with the Beerus, he can't attack with anything else. I'm so used to like trying to net as much value as you can off this turn. But there's the negate we were worried about. I think the most insane thing about this is that if he didn't even have the negate and had no cards in hand, he could take that three, that triple strike, and still be fine. Just be perfectly okay. Now he could. Potentially just hard tap some in the pan and go in with that. I mean, triple strike again. Or he could wait a turn, which is probably the responsible adult thing to do. But we don't do that here. What's he going to do? Huh. Was that a side deck tech he put in? Oh, yep. Yep. That card's so good. He has to kill a card on his board. So it's a good way to clear his hatch yaks uh, or his... Demigra. I don't know if it kills Demigra. I have to double check there, but it's a good way to just clear up his board. It kills the Hatchyox for sure, and he uh, he just gets to like not let himself get overwhelmed by if Peter playing multiple Hatchyox. So now if Peter plays another one next turn, it's it's a lot more manageable. Manageable uh, now that he's gonna have that other one on board as well. So Peter does have a Bible in his hand, however. He's got about I'd say 11, 12 cards in hand. And there's the hatch shack we were talking about, finally coming out. Boom, boom, boom. Gonna put three cards at the bottom. Recycle everything. Now he's gonna now see now 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 this is how things start getting very much out of hand. Peter's gonna get to draw and bring uh draw and bring cards like out of the drop with that Shenron. It's pretty insane. Like the, the every single turn that passes, Peter just gets further and further ahead, and it, it just gets more and more impossible for Joshua to win. I think that's probably maybe like a, a five.
five percent chance that he can win, maybe if that. Like it's just it's so far off right now at this point. He's got blockers on board. He's got sh like everything. He's just recurring resources. I think I would have untapped instead of playing that blocker though. Um, if I were him, just to have that extra four mana up. But that's probably probably why I'm sitting here commentating and not playing though. Because he can swing into that all you got, and then he's just gonna kill the blocker again. So that's why it was kind of rough. Unless he's looking for a bigger play where he kills the Shenron maybe and making them minus is it fifteen on the next attack he gets to minus uh minus a ten with like an after image or something, that'd be pretty neat. Oh, why'd he kill the Goku? Why would he kill the Goku? There's no reason to. Oh, that was rough. That was a big misplay on his part. Um so he killed the negate Goku, which First of all, put it back into the grave so that it's a target for Power Burst now. And also, it didn't have any combo power, so it's not like it was netting him any value on board to begin with. So, killing the Kami would have been a lot more efficient, or negging 15 to the dual attacker would have been a lot more efficient. But, alas, we make mistakes, and sometimes the uh, nervousness can get to us. But, pop, 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 that's all gone. Starting to get further and further away here. Peter's comfortable just saying pass because he knows that there's limitation to what his opponent's deck can do. And at this point, like you could probably just start playing the uh, the five drop Goku's just out of your hand straight up because you have no other way to cheat them out. There's not really anything else you could do. You don't really play any other threats. But if he could uh, play the Dark Banisher Fu, even now though, it's I think he's too far behind for it to matter. Like the turn to do it would have been two turns ago when he had when he got to four mana, but unexpected turns also a thing. But uh, he's keeping the board clean at least. Like he managed to clear the hatchback again off board, so now Peter has to dig for another one. But again, with uh, hatchback being hatchback, he's constantly reoccurring his resources at the bottom of his deck, and there's gonna get to a point where the only thing he's drawing are just threats, 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 because he's putting the three uh, to seven drops underneath the, his deck, so it's just not gonna stop. I think at I think at this point it's just gonna be a little bit too far off. We'll see. He's gonna swing double strike, give it crit most likely, and Peter's just gonna easily out combo that because he has fourteen cards in hand. And the Shenron goes. That Shenron is so insane. He gets you your your pluses, then uh, you combo him away for an additional plus ten, and then you put him at the bottom of your deck and you do it again. And that's the that's the play. That's the move. I'd be surprised if Peter doesn't have another one in his hand as well. Those SPRs went from being like 25 cents to, I don't know what they're at now, but, oh baby. Uh, let's see here. The Wish Granter, is that what it's called? No, that's probably the ultimate Wish Master. Let's see. Oh, that's not them either. Shenron. Let's see, let's see, let's see if I can find it. Wish Granter SPR, there we go. Those guys went from being thirty nine cents to like to six ninety nine now, boys. There you go. That's what Hatchy Boy did. That card, and he wasn't even played in the original uh, version of Hatchyak when he first came out for the first like few weeks or so. People only started really realizing how strong Hatchyak could be about um, two or three weeks into it. I think the uh, the blue, the red, yellow really, really like took the spotlight when the set first came out, and now it's just a question of. Uh, people looking and finding different cards that actually work very, very well. And also, obviously, with the search stuff coming out, it's all going to be incorporated together. Set 9 is going to be very strong. Um, although, I think Hatchyak is still going to have a place uh, no matter what in the format. Again, because just being able to stop people from going wide is just the most insane thing. Very nice. For all aggro decks. Yeah, Bubs, you're right. Hatch, Hatch is a very, very difficult matchup for aggro decks. Um, any Kefla leaders out there? There's probably a few Kefla leaders. People uh, bought out a good amount. I think the 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 booths all like sold out of their surge decks for Namekian and Saiyan within like 30 minutes of the event opening halls opening. So people went and bought their decks before even like uh, before anything else. Before yeah, before anything else. It's Wish Granter. Yeah, yeah, I looked it up. Thank you. Uh, young bad man. You're, you're a good guy, bro. And here we go again. He did it again. He puts the foo in. Uh, no, no, no. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Okay, good. No. Okay, whew, okay I'm glad Peter caught it. I'm going to have to call the judge again. 
So yeah, that's why it's nice having Peter on stream. He'll catch his own mistakes or he'll catch his opponent's mistakes. So yeah, I don't think uh, Joshua knew that. It could be a mix of just a uh, lack of test play or maybe just nerves, but uh, I think that's the ultimate oof because now he's tapped out and he can't super combo with anything. Oh, that's not what you do. That's not what you do. That's not what you do. Oh, yep. Okay. Whew. All right. Let's put it back on top. We know what card it is. All right. This guy, he's very used to playing locals. <laughs> you could tell. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Now Peter's about to dump everything. And I think that's all she wrote. Or maybe just really. But it's game. Just go for game, man. I think he knows. He doesn't want to like overkill it. But I feel like you have the game. Why not just dump? Yeah, he scoops it up. All right, boys. That was round two. Well, it was... Uh, it was fun to watch, I guess, just because it's always nice to see Peter on stream. But uh, the the roughness was just there. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think we're gonna we're gonna we have eight minutes left to the round. Um, we're gonna try to get Peter here to interview him. Um, I d I don't know if he's gonna have the most. Uh, I think I think we saw pretty much everything. I'm just gonna ask him primarily maybe about his other matchups and what he's worried about. I think that's gonna be pretty neat. But uh, I think the new search stuff is actually pretty insane. When you're not playing into hat check, I think the the pluses that it can it can provide, and then like the the mid range like aggro is insane, especially when it's awakened. It can just start like critting out, and you can double strike chomp a crit. And it kind of reminds me of Vegeta of old, like the set one Vegeta, but on a much 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 larger scale. You could, you could accumulate a lot of cards in your hand, and you just like um, swing at your opponent and try to crit away his life and stuff. It's pretty strong. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can get uh, Peter on stream here. So I can, for an interview, we'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, welcome back. We're here with the winner, Peter Katani. <laughs> what's up, guys? Oh, man, I have no voice. I don't know what happened. I think I'm sick. Well, what's going on, boss? No, oh, man, um, just want to talk a bit about that game you just played. You forgot to charge. How do you feel? <laughs> oh, yeah, game one, I forgot to charge at four. My, my win con is like, foo. I'm like, oh, I'm definitely going to do it. Do you play the Demigra? Oh, uh, yeah. It, it, it was like one of the first things that I got underneath game two. Oh, um, no. Okay. It's a 1-1 one -one split. Uh, this this list was, it's like Dehans, Fuji's, I think mine, um, a little bit. I have a tech in there. Do you think it's like the peak list right now? I Bro, I've, I've tried every single list. There's another one that he did really good in, um, it's called We uh, We Play Games, I think. It's in Vegas. Okay. And he got like first, and his list was beautiful. It had like four trailers and yeah. stuff. I was a big fan of it, but it just... It just doesn't seem like it works. I'm most, this list is mostly prepared for Baby. Baby's like the hardest right. matchup. That's, that sounds dumb. But the fact that the leader gets to swing three it's times, it's it's good. No, no, yeah. for sure, for sure, it makes sense. But I think I think like I was I was talking about it uh, during the game. I think you just stomp red, yellow, it, regardless, it, right? It, mm, yes. Okay. So that one uh, right now, Robbie from PPG, um, he's playing red, yellow, blue. Which I think is horrible, but he wants three frost, and frost is like the best card against fair. Him, bro. Yeah. So like all my yeah. secret rares are not really secret rares. Exactly. Anymore. So I have to play That's around, fair. and it, man, I don't know. Red yellow is it, cool because like Beerus is good. Like Beerus, you'll have trouble against Beerus, I think. Beerus is cute. They try to do that whole lock <laughs> cute, thing. Right. Yeah, like it's, it, to me, that's what it is. It's, it's locked. Oh, they have like one cool card, and I don't know what it is. They I have, think the, it's the just good. I said the five drop, uh, the five drop baby. That negates your leader's ability. Stops okay, it, that stops it from. That's what it it can, is. Then it lets you go. It lets them go wide. That's what I was saying. Like uh, it would let them go wide because those guys just build a board of like topos and uh, and Beeruses and just like they get their five drop Goku's out and then they go play the five drop baby. I can attack as many times as I want and yes and flood. No. Yes and no because you play the five drop baby and then you have to swing with the leader and the fact that mm. you have to swing with the leader and negate you can't act the battle. Yeah, yeah. There's a way. There's ways around it. For yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. Like baby does it so well because that leader swings three times. So it's mm. like, do I have three negates to stop all this? That's fair. No. That's why it's your. Is th is that your hardest matchup you'd say, or is there something that you are more worried about? I played like three hours testing with Marcel. Nothing but baby. So like, that's the only matchup I care about. Okay, so everything else is a free win. You think? I wouldn't say free win. Just nothing's like ever free. Well. Um, uh, except my ex. But um. Whoa, whoa bro. But, like, bro. <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, no, I, th I'm, I think the most uh, scared deck I am right now is Piccolo, Gogeta, if someone mm. actually plays it, because yeah. then my hand size goes away. Exactly. That's what you makes me feel right. comfortable. I think hand, hand control in general is pretty hard for you to, to deal with. Like, what about Revive? You think that Revive, that Revive uh, Goku, that the green one, when you I, I know revive? what it does. Yeah. I just, You're it, not scared it of it? Okay, yeah. Do anything because um, uh, five drop hatch warps 
ignoring barrier, so it just goes so away. So it just goes away. Okay, so you never fair. have to deal with it. Um, and hand control is really not a problem because Kid Goku just grabs the ball. So back, like, yeah. Discard, you're like, oh. I will see. Uh, like I said, you had like reoccurred so many of your balls. He he misplayed on one of the turns. Yeah, he, he uh, is that all you got and forgot and didn't kill your. Uh, no, he he forgot to add that. Is that all you got? Like straight up, just didn't do it. Oh, didn't do it. He just didn't do it. No yeah. He, well, it was on a turn where you uh, had two Kid Kus on board, mm -hmm. and then you had like you just added all the balls back, and I was like, sick. Sick. This is good. Yeah, no, we no, and, and that's, bro, so I don't think there's any list that doesn't play Kid Goku, but right now he was like, oh, I have a friend who plays that, but he was wearing Kid Goku. I'm like, that's the only reason you yeah, play this deck is it's Kid Goku. It's pretty strong. The whole, like, yeah, the whole plusing aspect's insane. Because, again, it will lose to hands control, so if you can keep reoccurring balls and it's discarding the balls instead of, like, comboing them, you're chilling. That's all it yeah, is. It's relaxing. You're chilling. But let's see how today turns out. I'm kind of excited. It's a new format. Yeah, hopefully we see you in Top Cut and I'm on hoping. stream I then. I and I got flu out here, and it was to sell stuff, but everyone got their cards, so, like, yeah. I can't sell stuff, so I got to make the money, so I got to top. It's, <laughs> it's stress. <laughs> it's stress is what it is. But we're going to try. Yeah, all right, Peter, man. Thanks for being on the stream. Of course, brother. And thank you for the interview. Appreciate it. Of course. That was Peter Katani. We will be right back with round three. Baby. <laughs>